conferenza stampa del film Le Belve, come sapete il film uscirà tra un mese, il 25 ottobre, in almeno 350 copie, ovviamente c'è tempo poi per definire il numero totale, ma sicuramente sarà un'uscita molto importante per Universal. Io volevo partire eh, con uno, una, un paio di domande, volevo chiedere a John Travolta e a Salmai che cosa vi attirava di questa eh, sceneggiatura, di questo film eh, molto insolito anche per la filmografia di un cineasta straordinario che ci ha abituato a così tanti cambiamenti come uno di persone. Che cosa vi attirava della sceneggiatura e dei vostri personaggi? I had read in years, it was very current, it felt very now, it felt like it reflected uh, situations uh, that were going on, uh, not only uh, locally in, in Mexico, but politically, and, uh, and I felt that it was uh, fresh, uh, no cliches and no, uh, uh, nothing that, everything I like to see in a movie is what this movie, uh, gave to me, and, and truthfully, I, I, I wanted to be part of, however <laughs> Oliver wanted me to be part of, I, I didn't really care, I just wanted to be part of the movie, and, and he gave me a, a very interesting character to play, uh, more interesting than I even realized when I was offered it, because I think I had to discover the character uh, by research uh, and by investigation, and then each day layers appeared that I didn't, hadn't seen initially, uh, but the initial impression was I loved the whole uh, idea of this movie. Yes, uh, for me, I, uh, I'm going to be honest, I was so excited to work with Oliver Stone, if, uh, if it had been a uh, a tree that I was playing, <laughs> taking it, but I was, when I got the script, I was so surprised that not only I, I got to work with Oliver Stone, but that on top of it I had such a great character to, to play, and so it, it was unbelievable for me, I said, For, for sure it's going to be a nightmare because it cannot be so many good logs, so many good things together. I'm sure when I get to work with him, he'll be a horrible monster at least because like, it cannot be so many good things. And then on top of it, I got the surprise of how wonderful it was oh, to be able yes. to work with him. So it was such a great experience all around. Ecco, invece a Oliver Stone volevo chiederle, eh, il, non sono molti film che lei ha tratto da libri, non sono molti film che lei ha tratto da libri, sono più film che lei ha scritto come materiale originale, c'è una differenza nell'approccio, nel lavorare su un materiale eh, preesistente oppure è sostanzialmente la stessa cosa per lei? Anche perché poi lei ha cambiato molto del libro rispetto al film. Uh, yes, I did, and I... I have to tell you, I enjoyed the process. I've done it before. I worked with the uh, novelist Don Winslow and his writing partner Shane Salerno over, uh, and they did not always agree with uh, the changes, uh, but the director rules in the movies, and the uh, the screen, the, uh, the the novelist often has to take. But we were happy, and we had some dis disagreements, but he came out and he supported the movie at the end. He was out there on American television, very nice. Uh, we had to make many cuts. The, scene, the book is written in a postmodern shorthand. It has more than 150 scenes and many characters, many different voices. We did that business of making it into 20, 30 scenes, and we put it in the voice, the voiceover of Blake O one person telling the story, and we changed a lot, including uh, the endings, uh, and the ending became two endings, which is fun. And uh, John, uh, I could say John's character <laughs> underwent the most significant change, because if those of you who have read the book know that he committed suicide, he was a corrupt uh, drug enforcement agent who killed himself, and I thought was the weakest character, in the one of the weaker characters in the book. I think the script uh, did him Uh, did him well, and we made him into the a weasel, a big weasel, but he becomes even a bigger weasel as the movie goes, and as we find out at the end of the movie, 
he not only instigates all the action by throwing, selling out the children, the, the, the young people, but at the end of the movie, he's the uh, master manipulator who makes the most amount of money, walks away with a smile, and takes down Salma, too. Beh, abbiamo una domanda qui, prego, sempre di presentarvi. Sempre di presentarvi. Ah, no, sono Salomone del quotidiano di Francione. Allora, eh, signor Sonio, io ho apprezzato molto delle, dei filoni eh, narrativi del film, come quello sui rapporti buoni e cattivi, che ognuno non è buono e non è cattivo fino in fondo, quello sulla famiglia, tra l'altro anche questo leggero riferimento al all'uso terapeutico della cannabis che viene fatto a un certo punto. Però il, la mia domanda era, perché mi ha colpito una parte del film, quando la signora Hayek Reina chiede a Do, ma il vostro popolo quando penserà ad un futuro? Quando comincerà a pensare al futuro? Voi tutti pensate che il popolo americano abbia un futuro? Marco. Abbiamo poi una domanda lì, ma non le costringo. Marco. Uh, well, you asked a lot of different questions. Uh, no, uh, I think the American people have to come to terms with the drug war. They haven't. It's been 42 years. It hasn't worked. America spent a trillion dollars chasing the bad guys. And the bad guys have been thoroughly confused between drug addicts, uh, drug dealers, and uh, terrorists. The confusion line grows. And uh, the war in Colombia, the war in Mexico, the war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan, and there's just nothing but war. I live in a culture of war. So is there a future in war? I don't think so. But some people in America disagree with me. Uh, as to the uh, characters who get cut off in the war, I think uh, Salma is a beautiful example of it because she is a, a strict uh, Catholic uh, widow. Her husband was killed in the drug war. She is not a natural born uh, gangster, but she becomes one in the course of her life because she has to, in order to save her children from being killed, more children than being killed. And she ultimately becomes very vulnerable in this war because she loses her standing by, uh, by trying to protect her rich, spoiled daughter in the United States. And Venicio and a man called Azul sense the weakness and they go for her. They sense the blood like sharks. So uh, she pays the price. Uh, no good end is in sight for this drug war. Potrebbero essere i politici, potrebbero essere i banchieri, l'alta finanza e poi, visto anche per parte di madre francese, insomma, questo suo essere anche europeo, se c'è qualche film, insomma, c'è qualche cosa della nostra cinematografia, in qualche maniera l'abbia influenzata. Mi dà fastidio questa cosa? Credo che si buffa. No. You're European Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. La prima è quella che interessava più a me. Chi sono oggi le belve? Se sono i politici, secondo lei, right. potrebbero essere? O anche l'alta finanza? Non so, la sua risposta. Right, right. Well, in the movie it's called Savages by Don Winslow. That's his title. And I think he's definitely referencing the six characters that we are studying in the movie, all of whom, in some way or another, become savage, Blake, Lively who's a beach bunny who thinks he can live very nicely with two boys, is by the end of the movie shooting Benicio del Toro in the groin uh, with, a, with a pistol. She's crossed over. Aaron Johnson is a young man who's spiritual and uh, he's a botanist, a scientist. He's growing uh, marijuana as a healing herb to help people. It's, it's very effective in medical relief and in pain. And, He does good with the money in Asia and Africa, and he is forced to deal with the cartel, and it becomes a business, and as a result, O is kidnapped. He has to become a willing participant in a murder of a, uh, of a, of a, of a false uh, herring. He kills uh, Alex uh, Epidemion Bashir. He burns a man to death, which O sees. So that this is a defeat of everything that these young people stood for. Uh, this is a savage in these good people. The savage uh, 
in, uh, in, uh, in John. He, perhaps he should talk about that himself. I love the way John plays off of every single person. He, he talks a certain way to his child. He talks a certain way to, uh, to, uh, to the young people. And he talks a certain way to Benicio when he comes to kill him. Everyone plays a moral game. They, their morality stretches as far as their appetite allows them to. It's about survival. And uh, you should talk about your own character. And the, the, regarding the cinematography, I actually thought that was an interesting question because Oliver had noticed in the last 40 years that the cinema, um, the cemetery had gotten very dark and uh, almost uh, where you don't see anyone anymore. And I loved this uh, almost a throwback to uh, older style of cinematography where the images are lighter and more colorful, Sergio Leone and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I was very excited about a look of a movie that seemed completely different <coughs> with a dark story, but with a light visual. I felt that, like in a yin-yang way, it balanced uh, this movie so beautifully. Uh, and it, were, it was refreshing. I, I liked, actually liked seeing people again, <laughs> and seeing uh, scenery again, you know. And, uh, yeah, and Salma's uh, blue dresses. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we are living in really hard times and that we need to change and that if you don't think in the things that you do in terms of um, a, a, a community, in terms of what is good for a community, you only think about everything you do in terms of your own benefit. You, you are becoming, a, we are becoming savages in that term, and I think we're living in times where we can no longer think like that, and we have to think more in terms of what's good for your own, your community instead of just your own benefits and survival. And war has always been money based, in my opinion. Um, it's been uh, something that uh, is tragic and unnecessary. Uh, and, and, and one day it has to stop. I, I, I don't see it stopping, and that's the saddest part. But I also wonder sometimes when we get into economic uh, despair that war is, becomes the solution for economics or something. And uh, that, that's very too bad, you know. Bene, abbiamo una domanda lì, poi due domande qui, e poi continuiamo il giro. Prego. Chi ha fatto domanda lì, posso domanda, per favore? Grazie. Quindi eh, Alan Bauman per l'ideale, una domanda a John Travolta, se possibile. Nella sua carriera ha interpretato ovviamente diversi ruoli, anche molto diversi uno dall'altro. Ce n'è per caso uno o più eh, che le mancano, uno o più ruoli che le mancano e che magari amerebbe riproporre in seguito? Grazie. Ah, well, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, but there's a, there's a line in a Tennessee Williams uh, play and movie uh, a prose that he says, uh, the, the character says, I have always depended on the kindness of strangers, and I have always depended on the imagination of writers, because I, I could never come up with the variety of <coughs> roles that directors and writers have come up for me. I, I love becoming someone's muse, but to be honest, I don't think I could have come up with half the ideas that these brilliant minds have come up with for me to play. And I decided one day that it was just my job to become characters for these brilliant minds. You know, even with this movie, I, I at first I looked at the part and I said, I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what's here. And then as I, I investigated the layers of possibilities and I met with the real man that does this kind of job and when I heard more about uh, Oliver's vision, then suddenly I could build a character and it could come to life and i become Oliver's muse. And that's what I love doing, you know. Uh, it, there's nothing like it. Uh, and it, it's equally as creative as coming up with your own ideas, but, but I find it much more adventurous for some reason. E poi dietro a Roberto De Frigio. E poi la festa più potente, volevo rilasciare una donna al collega per John Travolta. Eh, volevo chiederle, lei ha citato 
gli scrittori brillanti, eccetera, però è un periodo in cui fanno soltanto sequel e remake, se nella loro follia gli scrittori e produttori le hanno mai proposto di riprendere il ruolo di Tony Manero, è come immagina lei Tony Manero oggi, ha messo su famiglia, ha conquistato il mondo, oppure sta ancora lottando per trovare un equilibrio? Grazie. X Factor. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not a big fan of sequels uh, for, the, for the very simple reason that I love new ideas and I love new creations. Um, I've done uh, two or three in my life.